back to Linda's Pantry and today I'm doing a little post canning chat as you see in the title. So in my last video you saw that I canned up uh, actually 50 pints, was it 50 or yeah, 49, 50. It was 94 pounds of tuna, whole tuna to begin with and it produced 50 pints of tuna. Now I did mine because I split this with my friend and um, we split the work the money all of it um, and but I, I mean I I did the canning process I guess you'd say um, but I wanted to discuss a couple of things so I definitely got my timing double checked all of my stuff from the uh, an approved well an approved and this is one of my very favorite books I'll try to leave a link to this book down below I can't be without this in my home. This is the complete guide to home preserving. Um, it, and it's got not not just, um, you know, it's got it's today, the way we can today. So on page 394 is seafood. And it's got fish, uh, different kinds of fish. Um, if they're not super large, like, like salmon, you can you can can put the bones in there and everything, and they they just melt away. Um, tuna, you're you're taking the loins out, so I didn't have to worry about any of that. Um, I did make sure that there weren't any bones in it, but uh, 100 minutes is what it calls for, and it also calls to um, clean the fish, uh, to do uh, to add salt. That's optional. Salt is not um, something you have to do. But I, I brought back out of you know where I keep my jars because I washed everything up, and um, you'll see a picture at the end of all the jars out on the counter, minus two that were in the fridge because they didn't seal. So that's that part of this is what I'm talking about. It's a post canning chat, guys. So this is this was a fun canning experiment experiment now I used both pints and half pint jars my friend he he did all of his in wide mouth pints and um, he was the unlucky one he he did use pure lids and rings um, that was the only ones he could get his hands on and so two of those it did not seal and I, I by opening them I could not figure out why it didn't look like user error. They weren't, you know, they weren't over tightened. They weren't under tightened. Uh, there wasn't, you know, the headspace was fine. Um, anyway, we made tuna melts and then he uh, took the rest home and did a big tuna salad. So it didn't go to waste. I checked my jars and this is. They say you can check it within 24 hours. I'm not going to leave meat or fish in a jar that's not sealed for 18, 15, 5 hours on my counter. Once it's cool enough to just check. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to unscrew the bands. If you're questioning the, if you're questioning it, it's very obvious which ones are not sealed at that time. So as soon as the jars are cool enough to candle, I will do this. And anyone that sounds different than that is a no seal. So I had one out of each run and I did two runs. I had one, the one day that we packed all the jars, we went ahead and packed them all, got them all ready and put them in the refrigerator and for the next morning. Because 100 minutes, you know, the canning process, that's a long time. And I just didn't want to be up till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, trying to make sure that all the jars had sealed and all of that. You know what I mean? So I did it in two, two days. Um, if I had prepped everything the day before and got all the jars ready, then I could have done two runs easily. But that's the way it worked out. So I got all my canning information out of this book and I didn't I didn't put this out there but the national um, the website for the national uh, food preservation website you can get any of this stuff the guidelines are on that website that's all free at ball has this is a ball book um, in every one of their canning books there's something about 
seafood. So totally safe to can. I know I had a lot of questions. I never knew you could do that, but yet they buy tuna fish in the can at, at the grocery store. The difference in it is the grocery store tuna is so dry or it's oversaturated, wet, and it doesn't, it doesn't look appealing depending on what you're buying. So I always buy albacore. That's what this was, albacore tuna. Um, and, and at home, it's moist, it's delicious. I, in my pint jars, the second run, I had a few more. I think I did a dozen pint jars and then the rest were the half pints. In the pint jars, the last run, I, just as an experiment, I added a little bit of filtered water to see. I did have some siphoning because these, these guys are gonna give off oil and moisture in the jar and so it pushed some of it out, but all of the jar sealed, so it, it was all good. So I did a lot of plain tuna. Plain tuna, you can add whatever you want when you open the jar. The larger jars are kind of earmarked for tuna casserole or tuna pot pie. If you've never had tuna pot pie, oh, let me know, because I will make it for you. It is delicious. It's so good. In fact, it's on my fall, my fall list of things to do. Okay, um, I did some of the half pint jars flavored and some plain. These are a perfect serving for me. So I, I already opened one and I'm gonna tell you, I would have done the taste test, but there's none left. So I, I used the garlic chili sauce in, in some of these and I'm so very thankful I did. But I'm also gonna try, just as an experiment, try putting it in maybe a plain jar and seeing if I get the same flavor. This cooks into the meat. I made, I made a half pint, I added fresh jalapeno out of the garden, fresh cilantro, a little red onion, and some mayonnaise. Nothing else, no seasoning, nothing. These had heat, the flavor was just bursting everywhere you, you know, all over your tongue. You had cilantro, onion, garlic, chilies, and just that warm heat, it was absolutely delicious, and I, I shared it with a couple of people on crackers and they were like, oh my gosh. I said, I told you, home canned tuna, there's nothing better. So if you, I know a lot of you don't live in the area where you can do it, but if you're up here in the Northwest, you need to get your hands on some. And right now is the time to do it. So I did jalapenos in some, just slices. I didn't see them or anything. I haven't tried that one yet. And that was the first time I've done that. The last time and the first time I home canned tuna when I moved up here was a couple years ago and I just did all of it plain. But I thought this time I'm gonna try some stuff. So I did that, I will definitely do that again. The, you know, it's still out. Maybe it's gonna be too hot because these jalapenos, some of them are pretty warm, but I love jalapeno flavor and jalapenos tend to mellow and just leave their flavor profile as they process. So I, I have high hopes for that. I did plain and I also roasted some hatch chilies and did that in some of the jars as well. So I have a little bit of a variety for, you know, if I'm, I'm in a hurry in the morning, maybe like I was the other morning, I just open the jar. I don't have to do much to flavor it or season it. It's already in there. Absolutely delicious, wonderful, I will do it again. In fact, if I get just as good a deal later or, you know, here in a couple weeks, I'm probably going to add it because in my opinion, this is only my opinion, um, it is good on the shelf. My rotation, this is for me. I like to keep my stuff rotating every three years for the maximum. Um, I, when I get into four and five years later, I'll still use it, but I'd rather keep that rotation going. So three years, this isn't going to last three years. So I, if I get my hands on some more, I will definitely can it up and I'll bring you along. So that's, oh, and during the canning process, and this is part of what I wanted to talk about. So we get my canner going first and I have an all American and my friend had brought his 22 quart Presto canner and it had the 
regulator, it's a weighted regulator, I think it's 15 pound weight, but you can't take one of them, you know, you have to stick with that. And a dial on, so it had the dial gauge. We could not get it to come up to pressure, and I said, you know, it doesn't come up this slowly. And it was, there was water dripping out. It was obvious the seal was not sealing, and so I sent him packing. I turned the burner off. I said, we'll leave it shut. Don't, don't touch it. You go get a new gasket. And that's the benefit of being up here. There are actually stores up here that carry them. When I was in Reno, you couldn't find a store that had a gasket for you in store you have to order those online so had we not had that access here i would have had to cool that canner all the way down wait till the other one was done and start that process all over again and by that point it was already par cooked which is totally fine so when he got back with the gasket we cleaned it we did everything that it said to do and put it in and bam it came up to pressure really quickly and we were able to finish the process. So that lengthened our day a little bit, but I, I, um, it was, I had never had a gasket be bad before. And maybe, you know, like I said, maybe it was just a bad fit on the canner, who knows, but I wasn't willing to chance it. And, um, so anyway, it was, it was kind of a fun experiment to have that happen and, and um, know that we could fix it and it worked out just fine. So all of this on the shelf, I don't know that it's going to last because I literally, I had tuna day before yesterday and right now I want to make another tuna salad and share it. You know what I mean? Um, I had somebody asking if they could buy it from me and I'm like, no, no. I, I couldn't even put a price tag on it. I mean, all the effort and time that you put into it, and but you know exactly what went in that jar. I mean, we handpicked every piece was premium, premium albacore, albacore tuna. So, yeah. Anyways, nothing better. Guys, I hope that it inspires you to try your hand at home canning. And I will say my advice, if you have a Presto canner, keep the extra gaskets available at all times because that could have been you know not not too much fun um and the uh you've got your pop-up you know your emergency pop-up thing you should be replacing that every time you change that as well so take good care of them you know i think that one had been in storage for a couple of years and so it really hadn't uh, nobody had lubricated it or washed it or anything and not knowing that I thought that everything was ready to go so anyhow it was a learning experience it was great and I have a ton of tuna on the shelf I'm super excited about and I can't wait to share some recipes with you so like I said if you want to see the um, pot pie oh, you you need to leave me a comment in the comments section i hope if you like these sort of things that you'll go ahead and subscribe to my channel hit that like button maybe share it on your facebook page if you're in kind of a preparedness um group or anything share it in that group and go down below in the description i'll have my amazon store and this will be available as well as the all-american canner which you don't need a gasket for ever that was that was what i said I'm so glad I have an All-American because I'd have been stressed out if both canners were, you know, not sealing. And so, metal to metal seal, if you can. I know that they're more expensive, but man, they're worth it and they last a lifetime. You'll pass it down to your kids and your grandkids. And be sure and teach them how to do this. I don't know. Anyways, it's a lost art. But some people are coming back with it. So, okay guys. I hope it does inspire you. I hope that you will um, give me some comments. Tell me what you want to see next as far as you want to see some recipes using the tuna. Do you want to see um, some more canning recipes? Let me know. I only have a dozen jars available for canning anything. So mm, keep it small. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.